Spanish conquistadors reached the islands of the Philippines in 1521. They named the country after King Philip II of Spain in 1543. Pressing to colonize the archipelago despite such setbacks as the 1521 death of Ferdinand Magellan, killed in battle by Lapu Lapu's troops on Bactan Island. From 1565 to 1821, the Viceroyalty of New Spain ruled the Philippines from Mexico City. In 1821, Mexico became independent and Spain's government in Madrid took direct control of the Philippines. During the period between 1821 and 1900, Filipino nationalism took root and grew into an active anti-imperial revolution. When the United States defeated Spain in the Spanish-American War of 1898, the Philippines did not gain its independence, but instead became an American possession. As a result, the guerrilla war against foreign imperialism simply changed the target of its fury from Spanish rule to American rule. Three key leaders inspired the Latin Filipino independence movement. The first two, Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio, will give their young lives for the cause. The third, Emilio Guinaldo, not only survived to become the first president of the Philippines, but also lived until his mid-90s. Emilio Aguinaldo was born on March 22, 1869, in Cavite, Cavite, Philippines. Nicknamed Myong, Aguinaldo was the seventh of eight children. His parents were of Chinese and Tagalog descent. His father, Carlos, died when Aguinaldo was just nine years old. Widowed, his mother, Trinidad, sent him to attend public school in Manila. After graduating from the University of Santo Tomas in Manila, Aguinaldo returned home to Cavite where he developed a growing awareness of Filipino prostitution with Spanish colonial rule. While serving as the head of barter in Manila, he joined the Pilar Lodge chapter of the Freemasonry in 1895. The Freemasonry was a government and church band resistant group. It was through his role as municipal captain of this fraternity that Aguinaldo met Andres Bonifacio, a key figure in the fight to overthrow Spanish rule. In 1894, Aguinaldo joined the Katipunan or the KKK, a secret organization led by Andres Bonifacio, dedicated to the expulsion of the Spanish and independence of the Philippines through armed force. Aguinaldo used the nom de guerre Magdalo in honor of Mary Magdalene, his local chapter of the Katipunan headed by his cousin Baldemero Aguinaldo was also called Magdalo. Eager to fight for the cause of Philippine independence, in 1895, Aguinaldo took up with a secret society of revolutionaries headed by fellow Lodge member Andres Bonifacio. When a rival faction executed Bonifacio in 1897, Aguinaldo assumed total leadership of the revolution against Spain. By December 1897, Aguinaldo had managed to reach the truce of Bayak Nabata with Spain. He and his rebels agreed to surrendering of arms and accepted exile to Hong Kong in exchange for amnesty, indemnity, and liberal reform. However, neither side kept up their end of the bargain. The Spanish government did not deliver in full all that was promised, and the rebels did not truly surrender arms. In fact, Aguinaldo revolutionaries used some of Spain's financial compensation to purchase additional arms for the resistance. From Hong Kong, Aguinaldo also made arrangements to assist Americans fighting against Spain in the Spanish-American War. As neither peace nor independence had been achieved, in 1898, Aguinaldo returned to the Philippines to resume his rebellion against Spanish rule. Back in Cavite, Aguinaldo forcibly set up a provisional dictatorship after meeting with the Malolos Congress and drafting a constitution for a new republic. On June 12, 1898, Aguinaldo at last declared Philippine independence. Announced from his hometown of Kawit, Aguinaldo's proclamation put an end to four centuries of Philippine oppression under Spanish colonial rule. In January of the following year, dressed in a white suit at Wayne Church in Malolo City, Aguinaldo was sworn in as the first president of the new self-governed Philippine Republic. Just two weeks after Aguinaldo's immigration, an American sentry killed a Philippine soldier stationed at San Juan Bridge a gesture of resistance against the new pound Philippine independence. On February 4, 1899, the Philippine-American War exploded into action. 
Ginaldo's revolutionaries quickly resorted to guerrilla tactics, resulting in one of the bloodiest wars in American history, but in little direct progress for Aguinaldo and his cause. Concerning the apparent volatility of his efforts in war, Aguinaldo said, I saw my own soldiers die without affecting future events. After three years at war, Aguinaldo was captured by American General Frederick Funston on March 23, 1901. After swearing an oath of allegiance to the United States, on April 19, 1901, Aguinaldo officially declared peace with the United States. Aguinaldo took another stop at politics when he ran for presidency in 1935 against Manuel Quezon but lost. In 1950, he became a presidential advisor on the Council of State. Emilio Aguinaldo died of a heart attack at Veterans Memorial Hospital in Quezon City, Philippines on February 6, 1964. His private land and mansion, which he had donated the prior year, continued to serve as a shrine to both the revolution for Philippine independence and revolutionary himself. Andres Bonifacio was the foremost Philippine revolutionary who organized the KKK ANB which spearheaded the 1896 revolution against Spain. Andres Bonifacio was born to Santiago Bonifacio and Catalina de Castro, a Spanish mestiza in Tondo, Manila on November 30, 1863. He started his early education in the school of Guillermo Osmeña of Cebu. He reached only primary school at the age of 14. His father and mother died, forcing him to quit his studies and to look after his younger brothers and sisters. As a means of support, he had them help him make wooden canes and paper pants which he sold in the streets. Having learned how to read and write, he became a clerk messenger of Fleming & Company, a business firm dealing with rayton, tar and other articles of trade. Because of his industry, he was promoted as agent, but his earnings were still not sufficient to support the orphans. He moved to Pressel & Company as an agent. He showed determination and industry in his job. He supplemented his education through further reading and self-study. He wrote poetry and even became a stage actor in Moro Moro. He later became a mason and a sworn enemy of Spanish authorities. He became a member of La Liga Filipina, an organization founded by Jose Rizal upon his return from Europe. But when Rizal was deported to the Pitan, making the Liga practically dead as an organization, he quickly organized the taas-taasang kagalang-galang katimunan ng mga anak ng bayan. The organization spread rapidly in 1894 in many parts of the Philippines. He felt that he was about ready to lead a successful revolt in May 1896. However, before he could act, the katipunan was discovered by the authorities. More than 1,000 katipuneros assembled with him at Bugadlaw in Caloacan on August 23, 1896 and tore their cedulas. Since the time the katipunan was discovered, they evaded arrests, won uncertain victories, and incurred severe defeats. This prompted the Magdiwang faction to invite Bonifacio to Cavite to settle their differences and remain united. An assembly was called at Tejeros Cavite. Bonifacio presided the conference to establish the Republic of the Philippines. In the election, Emilio Aguinaldo was elected president, Mariano Trias, vice president, and Bonifacio as secretary of the interior. Daniel Terona questioned Bonifacio's qualifications, and Bonifacio was offended. Evoking his authority as the supreme head of the Katipunan, he declared the proceedings void. Bonifacio moved to Naikabite and started to form his own government and army. Meantime, the advancing troops of Spanish General Camillo de Polavia threatened to capture Cavite. Aguinaldo ordered Jean Pio del Pilar and Noriel, who were being given new higher positions, to leave Bonifacio camp and go back to their duties. Bonifacio with his family and men left Naik for Indang. On his return from Montalban, Aguinaldo sent men to arrest him. But Bonifacio resisted arrest and was wounded. He faced a trial for acts in a to the existence of the new government and was given the death sentence by a military tribunal. Aguinaldo's men executed him in the mountains of Margundon, Cavite on May 10, 1897.
On June 19, 1861, Jose Protasio Rizal Mercado y Alonso Riolonda was born in Calamba in the Philippines, Laguna Province. A brilliant student who became proficient in multiple languages, Jose Rizal studied medicine in Manila. In 1882, he traveled to Spain to complete his medical degree. While in Europe, Jose Rizal became part of the propaganda movement connecting with other Filipinos who wanted reform. He also wrote his first novel, Nole Metangere, a work that detailed the dark aspects of Spain's colonial rule in the Philippines, with particular focus on the role of Catholic friars. The book was banned in the Philippines, though copies were smuggled in. Because of this novel, Rizal's return to the Philippines in 1887 was cut short when he was targeted by police. Rizal returned to Europe and continued to write, releasing his follow-up novel, El Filibusterismo, in 1891. He also published articles in La Solidaridad, a paper aligned with the propaganda movement. The reforms Rizal advocated for did not include independence. He called for equal treatment of Filipinos, limiting the power of Spanish friars and representation for the Philippines in the Spanish Cortes. Rizal returned to the Philippines in 1892, feeling he needed to be in the country to effect change. Although the Reform Society he founded, the Liga Filipino, supported non-violent action, Rizal was still exiled to the Pita. On the island of Mindanao, during the four years Rizal was in exile, he practiced medicine and took on students. In 1895, Rizal asked for permission to travel to Cuba as an army doctor. His request was approved, but in August 1896, Katipunan, a nationalist Filipino society founded by Andres Bonifacio, revolted. Though he had no ties to the group and disapproved of its violent methods, Rizal was arrested shortly thereafter. After a short trial, Rizal was convicted of sedition and sentenced to death by a firing squad. Rizal's public execution was carried out in Manila on December 30, 1896 when he was 35 years old. His execution created more opposition to Spanish rule. Spain's control of the Philippines ended in 1898, though the country did not gain lasting independence until after World War II. Rizal remains a nationalist icon in the Philippines for helping the country take its first steps toward independence.